the new Fantastic Beast movie is coming out today, actually, but by the time I post this, it'll probably already be out. So, the new Fantastic Beast movie is out, and I did watch the first two and enjoyed a lot of it. I found myself having to defend it to a lot of people based on you know, plot holes and story things that didn't quite make sense, and I was just like, nope, this is the way that J.K. Rowling operates, you know? She she pre-plans, so there's five movies, and this is just the second one, so everything will be explained as we if we keep watching. I chalked it up to the fact that this is the first screenplay that J.K. Rowling was writing, and how screenplay is different from novel writing. I know that as a screenwriter. And you know there's certain things that you can do in a book that don't work as well in a movie, and so I was just kind of like, it's fine, I'm still like invested in the characters and the story and I'll follow it. And especially as a Harry Potter fan, I love seeing a prequel and seeing kind of the before we meet Harry type of story and young Dumbledore and all that stuff. And I think part of me thought that with a couple years before the next one came out, that Joe Rowling would have finally retracted her statements and come on to the other side of it so that by the time this next movie came out, I'd be able to go see it without knowing that I was supporting someone who's anti-trans. But of course, no. She has continued to dig her heels in. There were a lot of people when this whole Joe Rowling controversy stuff started who were like removing tattoos, getting rid of all their Harry Potter paraphernalia, just like completely denouncing anything associated with the series. And I, I read or I heard something maybe a couple months ago about all of this stuff, about particularly about um, Joe Rowling and about Joss Whedon, which is there are other people involved in the creation of these franchises and so you can't just you know boycott joe rolling solely by not seeing the movie or not supporting any of the the harry potter stuff because there's other people involved there's other other creators who who put their heart and soul into what was made so it's not as simple as just if i don't go see the movie only, only Joe Rowling will suffer. So taking all of that into account as well, and same with watching Buffy, you know, there's other people who are involved in the creation of those shows, even if both of, both of these franchises were created because of something that these two came up with. But I do think that box office numbers have an impact on the longevity of a series and I don't know that any kind of low box office numbers for this movie would mean that they'd stop making them. And even if they did stop making them, I don't know that that would convince Joe Rowling to take a second look at her viewpoints because she seems pretty, pretty set in her ways on all of that. had a few people in recent weeks ask me if I'm excited about this next Fantastic Beast movie and there's an interesting vibe to the room when that question is asked because my sort of knee-jerk reaction is to be confused and then also disappointed in the sort of flippant way that that question is posed it's it's not like they're saying so how do you feel are you are you gonna go watch fantastic beasts they're like are you excited about the new fantastic beast movie and it makes me realize that there are still people who either don't know about this stuff that that joe rowling has said or 
don't really appreciate the magnitude of the situation or or don't understand how ardently supportive I am of trans rights. Which is interesting to me since I've spent a lot of time, especially this past year or so, talking about gender and the importance of feeling valid in your identity and Jo Rowling has made it very clear that she, honestly, she's made it clear to me she doesn't get it, but she's also made it clear to me that she thinks that trans people don't matter and are a danger to society. So it's not a simple question because it's also not a simple, of course I'm not going to go see that movie, I don't want to support JK Rowling. Partly it's because I've compartmentalized Jo Rowling and JK Rowling, so even Switching between the two is, is hard, as I've probably done a few times in this video already. There's also still the part of me that, A, the, the writer and the Harry Potter fan wants to know what happens next and wants to continue following the story. And then there's also the part of me that's like, there's other people involved in this movie besides Joe Rowling, whose careers I do want to support because I like them and I think they're talented and I don't want to punish them for what Joe Rowling has done, so she's not the only one involved in this movie. But I think that the advocate, the proud, mask of center, queer woman, who's finally felt like she's found her place, that person, that part of me, I think that part's gonna win out. And it's, it's bizarre for me to have gotten to this point where not only was I not heavily anticipating this movie, but I was almost dreading it. And that hurts. It hurts me that It hurts me that something that I loved so deeply for so long, that brought me so much joy, could morph into something that causes me pain and causes me stress and makes me question things about myself and the way that I view the world. And this is not anything to do with the power that storytelling has to change our minds. It's not even about that. It's about toxic creators who use their platforms for negative purposes, to spread fear and misinformation that is harmful to people. So so right now, in this moment, I don't think I'm going to go see the new Fantastic Beast movie. Not in theaters. I'm not going to pay to see it. I may change my mind on that. I don't know. But... It's really hard. As you can tell by this video. Which is very long. <laughs>